ready. Dennis is hooked up on a big whopper. Probably a jack. First day out after Hurricane Irma. It hit right on top. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to. Uh -oh. oh, we bust you off. Oh my god, there's mullet everywhere and that's the reason. I think it's Big Jack. Oh yeah. Well I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a vo voodoo mullet across the top of the water and see what happens. <laughs> you fix it. You lose the voodoo mullet. Well I got hundreds of them. <laughs> Alright! Voodoo mullet! Come on up here. I gotta go around! The mullet! Look at it busting! Small one. Small jack. Fun, huh? That's the size you want to hit. Alright, alright. Perfect mullet imitator. Voodoo mullet. Mr. Jack. Alright. Another one. Just for the fun of it. There's little tarpon, little tarpon this big, jumping up in the jetties. That's what I'd love to get. And Dennis is putting on, let's see, what are you putting on? A voodoo ballet. Double hookup, double hookup, Jack's on the side of the boat. These dudes are relentless. Come on, don't you come on. <laughs> so much fun. But there is these little tarpon all over that are about this big, and that's the ones we ain't getting. Oh yeah, yours is a little bigger. That's a little bit more. A little bigger than mine. Sizable. We still need a tarpon on a egret voodoo mullet. Alrighty, folks, I wanted to show you my new oxygen system. This is the carrying bag that it's in. I got it from uh, Keep Alive. You can see Keep Alive here. There's a guy named Tom there down there in Keep Alive. Super nice guy. Set you up with any, any of his products that he has. They're real local down there in Tampa. Here's what it is. You got a bottle. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna take it out, but you got a big, big oxygen bottle. It's like a welding type bottle. Then he's got all kinds of uh, regulators you could choose from. This is a middle of the road one. That's just a hand tightening type. And then you got your surgical tube, your uh, air tube coming off. Goes on here. There's a dial on the bottom to do different oxygen flows and a gauge up top so you can watch it. Then I take one of my little gray frostbite coolers here that I've used before with a bubbler on it. And I drilled a hole in the side and it makes for a nice uh, entry to bring in the air tube. Then down in the bottom, this is a ceramic. This is a 40 or $50 Airstone. This ain't no bullshit from Kmart here. It's got suction cups and ceramic. And if you bring the, bring the camera in here a little closer and look right down in there, bring it real close. If you can see those tiny bubbles, I got this thing barely on with the oxygen. And if you can see that, see that it's like a foam coming out of there that's all you really need and it's such it's so supercharging your bait now I'll show you when I tune it up look at they're all gonna start freaking out on me let me get this sucked back down the bottom without crushing all the shrimp <laughs> all right get this down on the bottom here 
Now watch in there and I'm going to dial up the oxygen. Now look at it. See that foaming? The smaller the bubbles, the more oxygen will get dissolved in the water. But I don't need it that high to keep these shrimp. There's, it's only eight dozen shrimp. So I'm going to dial it down to save my bait. Just enough. This is like them going to the oxygen bar and having a beer while they're there. Okay? So, nice little compact unit. I really got sick and tired of the bubbler stones, and I got sick and tired of live wells that I recirculated. And the reason I wanted to go to this is shrimp keeping shrimp in the st john's river i mean it's it's a real chore you've got all throughout the year you've got different salinity levels to deal with and especially in the hot summer if i'm going to use live shrimp these oxygen uh this oxygen bubbles are going into the water at 50 to 55 degrees so it's actually cooling the water. Then you keep your in a cooler like this, a quality cooler. I mean, on 85 degree day, I should be able to keep my shrimp no problem. Plus, I can kind of store the cooler up under the leaning post, which is up under the top, and keep the sun off of it. The whole setup somewhere between, it depends on what you're really getting, but you're looking at probably $200 plus. But I think this is a good investment for keeping my shrimp. Been wanting to show you and try to just pass this on. I'll put all the links to the Keep Alive and their phone number and everything in the description of the video where it says show more under the video. So you can check it out. Keep Alive has been in business for like ever. I don't know, 20 years, 30 years. I've been buying different various things off of Keep Alive for for probably close to 20 years myself. So um, I just give them a call and just tell them what I want. So it's many times hard to find a dealer that's gonna have exactly what you want. They've got all different kinds of systems. They've got all kinds of bait tanks. So um, I think this is gonna work out, especially now the water's cooling off. You juice this up, you dip down there with the net and all them shrimp, they're so sprightly, they just come flying right out. So you, when you dip down in there, you got to be really, really careful. It'll work on mullet, croaker, it'll work on everything. So in the meantime, me and Dennis, who's the cameraman right now, we need to catch something to go in this box. Amen. Under ice. Called supper. Freshwater catfish burning down the house. <laughs> we are fishing in the St. John's River fresh water it's not supposed to be fresh water but it is we've caught nothing but let's see mangrove croaker and now a freshwater cat and I had one fish that burned drag off and I lost them and our live shrimp won't stay alive because we're past the Dames Point Bridge and there's nobody around up here but we're trying it because it's freshy water after the storm. So, he'll turn into freshwater catfish McNuggets. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm hooked up, hooked up. This is a good fish. It's all about fish for the box today. Can't even see him in this dark ass water. Yeah, nice keeper redfish. Woo, let the dogs out. I'm not done, I'm not done dancing yet. Now that's that's a beautiful hook set. Yeah. And he is a 22 incher. Mm -hmm.
What's this, a manatee? Up oh, here comes a manatee. Okay, this is how Dennis really likes to catch them. He's just lying to you about yeah. catching keepers. This is a little out of the slot. <laughs> All right. Every dog has his day. I get a 12 inch or two. <laughs> All right, folks, you better be careful out here in this river. <laughs> we just, I just had to jack up the engine. We just hit a big old giant board. Checking, checking the prop. I wasn't going fast enough. I wasn't going fast enough. I was just idling along, but it shut the engine down. It hit so hard. Yep, you better be careful out here. We saw it after it floated up. It was looked like a like a two by ten or something floating in the water. Alrighty, folks, back to the old used to be. Egret baits kick a mullet, and it kicks a nice trout. I'm just throwing it around, just giving it a shot. Catch me a little sweetheart. He rolled up on it, missed it the first time. Pitched back, same spot, rolled it by him, come right up and busted it. This is trout number two for Dave. I caught a short one earlier. My kick a kicking ass mullet. I think we found some tea route. Come on. I just got this one right out from underneath Dennis's nose. <laughs> yes, you did. He casted, missed one. I pitched in there. And this dude here went for it. Woo! Woo! Oh, Dennis has got one. Watch this. It's like a flipper. All right. Double trout dumb. <laughs> they're here. And they're thick. Check that out. We're talking triple triple troubles right in a corner of his mouth. Triple troubles. Oh, and one down here. Kick a mullet, baby. Kick a mullet. And there is a nice one. That's 20 incher. 20 inch pluser. You know me and my T-Routes. It's what makes the world go round. T-Route, T-Route. Yeah, they are, because I just got swiped at. Did you see that, folks? I just got swiped. You know, it's pretty cool when you have to stop in the middle of slaying them to make sure you don't have more than your limit. Do do mullet strikes again. Strikes again, bye-bye. We have to stop and count them <laughs> just to see. Yeah. And then, of course, we got our reds and drum in there. 